There are two types of process flow diagrams Microsoft Visio supports and provides templates for basic flowchart and cross-functional flowchart. Basic flowchart allows you to define process flow versus cross-functional, which is also called swim lane flowchart, allows you to define process flow, but in addition you define actors in separate swim lanes. And this diagram is extremely helpful to separate roles and responsibilities, specifically for asymmetrics. The best way to create basic flowchart process flow diagram is to use basic flowchart template in Visio. I used it recently, so it shows up in my recently viewed templates. If you don't see it right away, you can search for it using the search bar and select it from the search results. To start creating the diagram, all you need to do is to drag shapes into the diagram and start connecting them. I'm working with Patricia on the marketing project to create a video for our Flagman product. We both report to John. Because of the extremely heavy workload, John suggested that we add additional team member into our team. John gave us five considerations to build effective hiring process. He suggested that we should first define job description for the position. We should build this job description, keeping in mind internal and external candidates. He also suggested that we should define where we're going to advertise open role. And he recommended that we screen resumes for external candidates and talk to the managers for internal candidates. He also suggested that we set upfront rules for the interview and the hiring decision process. Every basic flowchart diagram has a starting and ending point. You use the start shape to define the start of the process and then add a text start into the shape of the diagram. Rectangular boxes define process shapes. You add the description for the process step into the rectangular box. For example, as John suggested, the first step in every recruitment hiring process should be defined job position description. You add title to the diagram by using the text tool. You select the text tool, select the area, and type the name of the diagram. There are three main tools that you most likely will be using and switching between in Microsoft Visio. You use pointer tool to work with shapes. You use connector tool to connect shapes. And you use text tool to add text into the diagram. All three tools are located on the home ribbon tab and you can see currently selected tool in the tools group on the ribbon. There are three major ways how you can add additional shapes onto the diagram. You can drag the shape and you see Visio has grid lines that allows you to position the shape among the existing shapes to make diagram look professional. Once you've added additional shape and updated the text on the shape, you can connect both shapes using connector tool. You select connector tool and drag the line from one shape to another you need to switch back to pointer tool to add additional shapes to the diagram. Second major way to add shapes onto the diagram is to select existing shape, use copy, and use paste. You can update the text on the copied shape in a very similar way, and then you can drag the shape to position it at the same distance and along the grid lines with existing shapes. You need to switch to the connector tool to drag the line from the existing shape to the new shape. And the third and probably the most effective way of adding shapes into the diagram is to use the extension tools in Visio that are available for the flowchart diagrams. To see them better, I'm going to zoom in, and then once you hover the shape, you see the extension triangle, which shows all available shapes that you can add and connect from the existing shape. For example, my next step is the decision, whether this is internal or external candidate. To add decision into the flowchart diagram, I need to use diamonds. And as you can see, once I selected the diamond, it added not just the diamond, but also added a connector from the existing shape to the diamond. Typically, the decision on the decision shape is Boolean, yes or no, but sometimes it depends based on the question that you're asking in the decision box. In my case, the hiring process might be different for internal versus external candidates. For internal candidate, I might choose to talk to the manager, and I will represent this step with the action box for the process flow. I may also consider specifying that this is an internal branch in the process flow by selecting and double-clicking on the arrow and adding internal text. For external candidates, my process might be slightly different. I may choose to do initial phone screening to get the initial impression about the candidate and to determine their interest and salary range for the position they're applying for. My next step might be the same for both types of candidates as I would need to make a decision whether to invite them for the interview. Considering the circumstances, one of the best way to represent this step might be to copy an existing shape 
and paste it as a new shape. Once I rename this shape, I can position it along with other shapes and connect it from both internal candidate as well as external candidate as I would need to make a decision whether to invite them for the interview. If you've noticed that something is missing, for example, external branch is missing on the arrow, you can just double click on the arrow and add the text. Sometimes you may also realize that you connected arrows to the wrong places on the box. For example, decision box typically has one input and at least two outputs. And it is, might be hard for me to represent the output from this decision without crossing the lines. So I might consider changing the input lines to the left input place in the diamond shape. To do that, I would need to select the line and drag the end point of the line and connect it to a different input point. I can also consider doing the same thing for another line. Now I will be able to show both positive and negative decision outputs right on the diagram. For example, for negative decision, I might choose to send an email and I'll show this as a process flow step with the appropriate text. I can send either email or regular mail letter and you would want to separate actions with some sort of separator. And I chose to use slash, but you can use something else on your diagram. To show that this is a negative decision, you might want to add no to the arrow that is output from the decision-making process. If you choose to invite candidate to the interview, you may consider showing this as a process step in the diagram. The process step might have a name in-person interview, or you might consider reflecting that this also might be a Zoom meeting because of the COVID-19. After conducting the interview, you may need to make a decision. If you choose to hire a candidate, you might consider communicating this information to the candidate in the form of letter of offer. And you would need to reflect it with the yes flow on the diagram. If you choose not to hire a candidate, your process might reflect sending a rejection letter to the candidate. And you reflect it with the connector, connecting it to the send rejection email process step. And you might highlight this branch as the no branch on the diagram. As usual, if you notice that branches are missing, for example, in my case, invite for the interview is missing the yes text on the arrow, you can always add it by editing the arrow in the diagram. Communicating offer to the candidate concludes this process flow and can be reflected with the and symbol on the diagram. In a similar way, sending rejection email also concludes the process flow and could be concluded with the same symbol. Keep in mind that process flow can only have one starting point but can have multiple endpoints. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.